Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm very excited about this lecture because this lecture is finally going to put into context everything that we've been talking about so far. If you go all the way back through what we've talked about, where we started was uh, sequences. And it kind of felt like these might have come out of left field because we were before that talking about maybe integrals and differential equations. But we understood sequences in order to better understand infinite sums. Remember, we needed to think of sequences uh, in order to define uh, partial summations and talk about convergence of a infinite series in terms of convergence of partial sums. But still, it feels like we really strayed, right? It feels still like we're very far from the calculus that we might be sort of used to, where we talk about functions and derivatives and integrals and limits. And so today, in this lecture, we're going to put everything back into context. We are going to talk about power series today. This is uh, sort of like infinite polynomials. And you can see the word infinite in there. That is going to mean that we're gonna be talking about infinite series again, but this time infinite series involving functions. And we're gonna use all of that experience that we've built up over the past few lectures talking about series and convergence and sequences and all of these sort of related concepts and put them together to again, start talking about functions. And we're eventually going to make our way to Taylor's theorem, where we're going to show how these series relate to the functions that we know and love. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it. Let me show you what we're gonna talk about today. So, let me start with a definition so that we know exactly where we stand for the day. So a definition. We are going to talk about power series today. So the, there are two particular uh, power series that we're gonna talk about. Uh, they're actually sort of the same, but a power series, uh, sorry, about x equal to zero. So about x equal to zero. Uh, is a series of the form. So we'll discuss in detail in a moment, but it's a series of the form. We're gonna start counting from zero to infinity. So be careful. Traditionally, we've been using a lower bound of one, but sometimes I like to throw you a curveball just so you can get used to this. So here we start at zero, x to the power of n, which this is c zero plus c one x, plus c2 x squared plus c3 x cubed and so on, right? So the index here corresponds to the power on x. And similarly, we will talk about a power series, oh, sorry, a power series about uh, a different point, say x equal to a, Similarly, is a series of the form, uh, and in this case, it's gonna take the same general form, except the polynomial is going to be x minus a to the power of n, which is just c0 plus uh, c1 times x minus a plus, uh, sorry, c2, times x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a cubed and so on and so forth in which the center a and the coefficients C uh, sub n or C zero, C one, C two, and so on and so forth are constants. Okay, so these are power series. Okay, so the uh, you, you can see that the series about zero is just the series about a with a equal to zero. Now, the series about zero is so common that we are going to use it quite a bit that it's worth just defining on its own. Uh, but think about what this is, okay? This is sort of like an infinite polynomial, 
right? It includes potentially every single degree on X, right? So we think of a degree two polynomial, the quadratic functions as being all polynomials up to X squared, the cubics being all polynomials up to X cubed, the cortex up to X to the four. In this case, it is every possible power on X all the way up. So this is sort of like an infinite polynomial. You should, that's really how you should think of it. Now, in uh, some sort of generality, this is a function, right? I can take a value of X and I can put it into this sum and we can ask what is the sum for that value of X? Now we've seen that this comes with some difficulties though, right? Because sometimes these sums, these series don't always converge. So this is sort of a weird aspect that we're gonna see with these power series is that you know they, if they converge, they describe a function. But if they don't converge, they describe nothing of value. Let me give you an example. Let's, let's go right into examples so we can illustrate everything that I want to talk about. So let's consider, uh, let's consider that everyone's maybe favorite, and uh, we'll see why as we go through this class. Uh, the one with every c equal to uh, 1. So this is the series of just adding every power of X together. So let me just put a little note here. This is about zero and CN is equal to one for all N greater than or equal to zero, just so that we can put it in the context of our definition. So the question is, uh, you know, what does this function actually look like, right? Because I'm not very good at uh, visualizing infinity and I don't expect that anybody watching this is either. Uh, so the question is, you know, what happens uh, to, this, to this sum? Does this equal to a function? Well, what we do know here, what we can see is that if I wanna go from the first term one to the next term X, uh, I just multiply by X. If I want to go from the term x to x squared, again, I just multiply by x. Uh, so this is actually a geometric series. With ratio r equal to x. And therefore, we know that this thing converges when x is uh, between minus one and one. So therefore, this sum of x to the power of n is equal to the initial term one divided by one minus the rate x when absolute value of x is less than one, which is the same. So or minus one is less than x, which is less than one. So what we have here is a new representation for a function that you probably already understood, right? The function is one over one minus X. You've probably seen this before. It's a rational function. You probably used it. Maybe you even took an integral of it. But what we're seeing here is that you can, you can describe this in two different ways. You can describe it as one minus, or one over one minus X, the sort of traditional way you would describe it. Or you can describe it as an infinite series. You can describe it as one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus X to the four and so on and so forth uh, for every single power. And as long as you, you describe this uh, for X between minus one and one, these things are the same function. So this is the fundamental difference with, uh, with power series. The right-hand side, that's going to work for every x that's not equal to positive 1, right? The 1 over 1 minus x. The left-hand side of the series describes that function, but it only describes it what we call locally. It describes it near the center. Remember, this thing is centered around 0. So all it's doing is describing it near the center. So for x between minus 1 and 1. This is a different property, right? You're typically used to describing functions globally like one over one minus X, here these series are just doing a, a local description. So it's not for every X that these things are equal, just for some range of X. Okay, let me show you another example. 
So let's look at uh, the power series, one, and then minus one half times x minus two, and then plus one quarter times x uh, minus two squared, and then minus one eighth uh, times x minus two cubed, and so on, so that the general term is minus one half to the power of n times x minus two to the power of n and so on and so forth. So this is an infinite sum. And what we can see here is that, so IE CN is equal to uh, minus one over two to the power of n. And again, this thing is equal to a, um, a geometric series, right? But it's a geometric series, again, involving x's. And this geometric series is a power series centered about a equal to two this time. So this is, maybe we'll put it in blue just to match again. This is a geometric series. And the ratio, in this case, the ratio is equal to, well, to go up a term, you need to multiply by minus one half and x minus two. Okay, so again, the ratio is x dependent. So then the series converges. We already know this. The series converges when the ratio is between minus one and one. So that is the same as saying x minus two divided by minus two is less than one. So that is just the minus one half times x minus two. I just wanted to write it all as one nice fraction. I threw the minus two on the bottom there. So this thing is the ratio of my geometric series. We know that geometric series converge when the ratio is less than one. So this is gonna give us condition on when the series converges based on the value of X. So let's go ahead and let's simplify this out. So remember we have X minus two divided by minus two here is less than one. This is the same as we can get rid of that minus sign. And then what we can do is we can multiply up by two. So we get the absolute value of X minus two is less than two. We can open up the absolute value. This is the same as minus two is less than X minus two, which is less than two. And let's add two to every side. So I get zero is less than X, which is less than four. So that means that my series, if I go back here, this infinite series converges when X is between zero and four. And so the question is, what does it converge to? So what does the power series converge to? Well, it's a geometric series. Life is good, right? This isn't so bad. So remember the series is equal to N equals zero to infinity of the CN term, so that's minus one over two to the power of N, and then X minus two to the N. Well, the first term in the series is one, and this is one divided by one minus the ratio now. Now the ratio is uh, X minus two divided by minus two. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of simplification here one plus X minus two over two. And what we'll do is we'll multiply top and bottom by two in order to get rid of the fraction already in this fraction. So I get two over two plus X minus two, which gives me two over X. So what did this just tell you? This told you that that infinite sum 
that looks ugly, maybe is hard for you to look at because you're just not used to thinking of functions this way on the very left uh, piece of the page. So underline in red here, that's equal to a function that you probably are not intimidated by, right? That's a pretty easy function, two over X. The only difference here is this only holds, this equality only holds when X is between zero and four. It does not hold when X is equal to five or when X is equal to negative 13. It's only when X is between zero and four. So again, we have what's called a local description of our function uh, in terms of an infinite power series. Okay, so let's try and figure out some more of these, right? Let's see what some of these functions converge to and let's try and understand, uh, you know, the, the nature of these power series. So let's continue with some examples. Let's say uh, we're gonna find what values these things converge for. So let's do the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, uh, sorry, we'll start at one in this case, just uh, to again, sort of keep you on your toes. So n minus one, and then x to the n divided by n, which I'll write out the first few terms is x minus x squared over two, and then plus x cubed over three minus blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the question is, you know, how are we going to determine if this thing converges or not, right? This is not a geometric series anymore, right? It's not immediately clear how you can multiply from one term to the next uh, to move around. But what we could do is we have all of these awesome tests, right? We can use a ratio test. So use the ratio test. Well, the ratio test, uh, we're going to have un is equal to uh, say minus one to the n minus one over xn or xn times xn over n, I'm sorry. And that means that un plus one, so if I'm thinking of this thing being the sum of uns just you know as a placeholder, then this becomes minus one to the n, x to the n plus one divided by n plus one. And so let's look at the ratios. We remember the ratio test. You might have to pause the video and go look it up from, the pre from your notes, but you're taking the ratio of consecutive terms here. And so in this case, um, you are going to get the minus ones not mattering because you, we are doing an absolute value. So they're not even gonna matter. We're gonna completely ignore them. And when I get X to the N plus one divided by N plus one, and then times n over x to the n, which is equal to n over n plus one times the absolute value of x. And you take the limit as n goes to infinity here, you just get the absolute value of x because n over n plus one is equal to one uh, in the limit as n goes to infinity. So we have convergence, so convergence for the absolute value of X less than one. Remember this was the row value from the ratio test and divergence for the absolute value of X larger than one. Remember, this is just what the ratio test tells you. Remember with the ratio test, these things were uh, given by the, uh, I think the value we used was rho to represent these things, right? We said if rho is less than one, then it converges. If rho is bigger than one, then you diverge. Okay, so then what about at the endpoints? So what about when x is equal to plus or minus one? Right, we've, we've dealt with every single value except for the endpoints here now. So we know we have convergence when we are between minus one and one. We know we have divergence when we're outside of that interval. The question is what happens at the endpoints? Okay, well at X equal to one, the series 
becomes, well, here's what the series is. This is minus one to the n minus one over n because x is equal to one in this case. And so we, this is the sum from n equal one to infinity, which is equal to, in our case, this is going to be uh, one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter, so on and so forth. And this is the alternating harmonic series, right? Which tells us that we have convergence at x equal to one, right? We know that the alternating harmonic series converges to ln of two. And so therefore we have the, uh, the, that this thing, that this power series converges at x equal to one. Let's do the same thing for x equal to minus one. At x equal to minus one, uh, the series becomes Well, now we have the sum from n equal one to infinity of minus one to the n minus one, and then x to the n, so minus one to the n over n, which is the same once you put those minus ones together as minus one over n, which is minus one, minus a half, minus a third, minus a quarter, so on and so forth which is the negative of the harmonic series. Now we know that the harmonic series diverges. So infinity times minus one, that's still a divergent series. So therefore the power series diverges at x equal to minus one. So summary, this sum, n equal one to infinity of minus one to the n minus one uh, times xn over n converges for x between minus one exclusively and one inclusively and diverges when x is less than or equal to minus one or x is strictly bigger than one. Okay, so it's, it's kind of tedious, right? You have these sort of frustrating aspects to this uh, because uh, you, know, you get say using the ratio test you get an interval, but it's open-ended. You have to check the endpoints of the interval to see if you work here. So we get most of the values, but you still have to check those endpoints, the places where the ratio test is inconclusive. So that's usually where most of the time spent doing these problems is. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another one. So this is, uh, what do we call that? We call that one. Let's look at, a second one here. So let's look at the sum n equal to, let's say zero to infinity of xn divided by n factorial, which is one plus x plus x squared over two plus x cubed over three factorial, which is six uh, plus x to the four over four factorial, which is 24, and so on and so forth. Again, let's use the ratio test. So from the ratio test, oh, sorry, not ration, ratio. Well, we have un is equal to xn over n factorial and un plus one is equal to xn plus one divided by n, sorry, plus one factorial. Remember, we saw this with the, with the ratio test the first time. When you see these factorials, that typically means you wanna use the ratio test. So I didn't just you know, guess which one I had to use here. When I see factorials, always ratio test, or at least in my case, every time. Uh, okay, so, 
let's set this up. This thing is going to be um, the absolute value of xn plus one over n plus one factorial times n factorial over xn. And in this case, you get the absolute value of x divided by n plus one. Remember, we saw the trick in the ratio test video. Uh, you open up n plus one factorial, maybe I'll put it in green. n plus one factorial is the same as n plus one times n factorial. And so the n factorials will cancel. And this goes to zero uh, for every single x for any x and r. So the ratio is equal to zero always, no matter what the value of x is. So therefore, the power series converges for every x and r. That's kind of cool, right? That one uh, converges no matter what the value of x is. You can put in x equal to three, x equal to minus pi times e, or you know, x equal to 100 trillion, still gonna converge. And that speaks to the factorial, right? The factorial goes to zero, or sorry, one over the factorial goes to zero so, so, so ridiculously fast. Okay, let me give you one more example here uh, just to illustrate some places where this can go right and some places where this can go wrong. Let's look at the sum from n equal to zero to infinity. Again, we have a factorial, but it's gonna be n factorial times x to the power of n. So this would be you know, one plus x plus two x squared plus six x cubed plus 24 x to the four and so on and so forth. Okay, so the first thing you can see here is that the numbers seem to be getting big, right? The coefficients in front of the x's are getting big very, very fast, as opposed to the previous case where they got small very fast. So let's use the ratio test again. And let's see what we can do. So the ratio test in this case, uh, I'm not gonna write out what the UN and UN plus one are because I think that we can figure that out. Uh, but let's see what we get. We get uh, a nice N plus one factorial times X to the N plus one, that's UN plus one, divided by N factorial times X to the N, that's UN. And in this case, you do my same little trick for expanding out n plus one factorial. This gives you n plus one times the absolute value of x. And now you have to ask yourself, what does this thing converge to? Well, as n goes to infinity, there's two cases. n plus one goes to infinity. So this thing is equal to infinity as long as x isn't zero any value of X in there, then you multiply that by something that's going to infinity, it's going to infinity as well. But it goes to zero if X is zero, right? Because if X is zero, then you're multiplying by zero at every single step. So what is, this one says something really, really weird, right? This says the series diverges for every, x not equal to zero, that comes with the ratio test, right? Because the ratio uh, rho in this case is bigger than one, right? It's equal to infinity in these cases. And it converges for x equal to zero. And you can see from the original series that putting x equal to zero in there is not very fun, right? Because then the series is just equal to one. There's only one non-zero term. So this is a weird thing, right? We've seen series so far that converge on intervals, right? So, you know, for some range of values. The previous example, we saw a series that converges for every single X that you put into it. And now we saw the sort of degenerate case where this thing only converges for a single point, 
and that's x equal to zero, the like least exciting point you could possibly have here. Now, let me summarize this with a nice theorem that's going to tell us uh, most of the the properties that we care about for the uh, for for power series. So let's say if the power series, and let's just write out what the power series looks like, n equal to zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n, uh, which is you know a zero plus a one plus a two. Uh, sorry, a one x. So I'm very used to writing just series. Now we need to get used to writing power series. Uh, if, if it converges at x equal to c, which is not zero, right? Because it's going to converge at x equal to zero no matter what. It's just going to equal to a zero because every other term is equal to zero in the sum. Uh, then it converges. Uh, absolutely, remember, we know what absolutely means, converging absolutely, ah, sorry. Uh, for all X uh, with the absolute value of X less than the absolute value of C. So we get an interval of length at least two C that this thing converges on. That is awesome, right? This is saying that you sort of have this connected region where you're going to converge. If you can just identify one non-zero point where it converges. Similarly, if the series diverges, uh, at x equal to d, then it diverges uh, for all x, with, so sort of beyond this interval, the absolute value of X larger than D. And I'll just, uh, I'll put a little note here, you know, what does this actually mean? This means, you know, X is either bigger than the absolute value of D or uh, X is less than the negative absolute value of D, All right? So that's sort of the two cases here. Uh, so it's sort of outside of the interval. We saw this already, right, with the uh, with some of the examples that we looked at. Okay, so that's kind of interesting, uh, but you know, let's put it in a little bit more layman's terms. Okay, I think there's a better way to state this. Actually, we can state it as a sort of corollary of this thing. So let's say corollary. Or sorry, maybe maybe it's not a better way to state it. It's a better way to think about it. Okay, so. Uh, the convergence of the series of the series, and we'll just write it generally. Typically, we write so Cn x minus a to the n. So we're writing a completely general power series uh, is described. by one of the following uh, cases, following three cases. Okay, so let me give you case one. Case one here says uh, there's a positive number R. So there is R greater than zero uh, such that S dot T, the series converges Uh, for uh, it converges absolutely for all x uh, such that x minus a is less than r and diverges for all x such that x minus a is bigger than r, right? So this is basically the C and D case, right? Uh, that we just showed in the theorem. And also 
this is what we had to check with our, our first example or our first sort of work example using the ratio test. The series may or may not converge at either of the endpoints. Uh, X is equal to A minus R and X is equal to A plus R, right? So this is gonna be the scenario that you probably are going to see a lot in the problems that you work through and that we will see with some of the examples. Basically, we have a finite radius, that's what capital R stands for, where we have convergence. And we typically get that from something like the root test or the ratio test, or if it's a geometric series, um, and then what we need to do is we need to check the endpoints, just like we did with one of the, the worked problems today. Okay, another case, sorry, I should be consistent with my numbering here, is when um, the series converges, so the series converges absolutely, for all X. And in this case, you can think of the radius being infinite. R is equal to infinity. So we saw that with our example of Xn divided by N factorial today. And the last case is of course gonna be the last example that we just saw and the series converges, converges only at the center uh, at X equal to A and diverges elsewhere. And we consider this to be the radius is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, we're not gonna prove those results, but um, I would like to just wrap up with a slight discussion of what this means, right? This means that those power series always have to converge on like connected regions, right? They're always sort of converging on intervals, either open or closed or half open intervals. You're never gonna find a series that converges at one and converges at two, but doesn't converge at three over two, right? That's what the theorem was telling you. It was saying, you know, if you can find two regions where it converges, it converges at every point in between as well. I think this is a weird property, but, I shouldn't think that because it's sort of like an immediate consequence of everything that we've talked about with the ratio test and the root test and geometric series and all of these convergence properties of these, uh, of these infinite sums. Now, what we're gonna come back with in the next video is sort of talk about some of the properties of these, these power series. And in particular, how we can do calculus on them, how we can take derivatives of them, how we can take integrals of them. And we can see, you know, uh, how we can figure out what these things actually converge to, right? So what these functions are actually describing in terms of our sort of natural language of how we describe functions.